Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Legion 5 again. We looked at this a few weeks ago, but this one has an AMD processor in it, and the last one we looked at had the Intel one, so we'll be able to do some comparisons here to see how this one performs versus the one we looked at a few weeks ago. And we're going to get into this in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is the mid-range of Lenovo's gaming laptop lineup. This is a 15-inch device. It's got a 1080p display on it. There's a couple of different display options. The one that we have on our review loaner here has a 144 hertz display at 300 nits. There's also a 120 hertz display at 250 nits of brightness and a 60 hertz that's also at 300 nits. And of course, the price you pay will vary as to which display you choose. This one is the top of the line one, and it is pretty bright. We're on battery right now, so it's a little reduced, but I was uh, pleased with the brightness overall, and it's very similar again to what we saw on the Intel version of this. Now, this is all plastic. It doesn't have the metal finish that the Legion 7 has, but otherwise it feels pretty much identical to the Intel version. Now, this one has a Ryzen 7 4800H processor inside. That's got eight cores and 16 threads. The Intel one we looked at, which had the i7 processor, has six cores and 12 threads. And as you'll see as we get into some of the benchmarks that we ran on this, this does have some pretty good advantages on CPU performance over the Intel version. And if you need some CPU horsepower, this might be what you want to look at. Now, this one has a 1650 Ti NVIDIA GPU on board. The Intel we looked at had a 1660 Ti, so unfortunately we can't do a direct head-to-head -head here between the two. Uh, but there's also a version of this that has a 2060 uh, installed, so you can choose to go up with that. Uh, the review unit here has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage. I did take it apart and it looks pretty much the same as the Intel one inside. You can see all of the cooling that they have set up on there. Uh, the NVMe drive is uh, right over here under that metal plate. Above it is the Wi-Fi card. It does support Wi-Fi 6. The RAM is upgradable and is underneath this metal shield here. This one had two sticks of eight gigabytes installed. And then you've got some additional storage options. Again, very similar to what we saw on the Intel one, actually identical to that one. So you can install a SATA hard drive here in this slot, or you can install another M2 NVMe SSD, but you can't do both because physically you have to remove the SATA uh, drive mount here in order to get that M2 drive installed. But you do have some good amounts of storage options on this one. Now the weight on this is five and a half pounds or 2.26 kilograms. And that of course is heavy for a laptop, but Relatively light, I think, for a gaming laptop. I like the portability of these Lenovo units. I actually have an older Lenovo gaming laptop that I use for gaming, but actually mostly for production these days because they're very portable, yet very powerful. And this one, of course, continues that. Again, all plastic, but it still feels pretty solid. I am very pleased with the keyboard on the new Legion devices. It's uh, got a number pad here, which was lacking last year. Very nice large keys. Lenovo's been making good keyboards for a while, but the travel on this one is actually better than a lot of their other laptops. The keys really push down far. They're not mechanical, but you get a lot of nice tactile feedback here, which feels really nice. Now this keyboard is backlit, but it's a single color backlight on here. You can see it lighting up there. Uh, they do have an RGB version available, but I don't think you can control individual keys in that setup, uh, just range of, ranges of keys. Uh, the trackpad here is very nice, same as what we saw on the Intel version, also redesigned for this year. Feels really good, and it's a click pad, of course. And for ports, you got pretty much the same layout we saw on the Intel Legion 5. So we have a USB 3 port here on the left-hand side with a headphone microphone jack over there. A bulk of the ports you're going to find here in the back. So we have gigabit Ethernet right here. Next to it is a USB Type-C port, and they've got some cool labels here above them so you can see what you're plugging into without having to lean all the way over to the back of the laptop. 
Uh, this is a uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. It'll perform at up to 10 gigabits per second. It will also do display port out, but it does not work with power delivery. You're going to have to plug in the AC adapter in order to charge the laptop and power it. Uh, next to it, you got two more USB 3.0 ports. These are running at 5 gigabit speeds. You have an HDMI output here. You've got the power adapter there. And then, of course, you've got your Kensington lock, so you can lock it down on your desk and not have it uh, walk off with anybody there. And then on the other side here, we have an additional USB 3 port. No Thunderbolt on this one, of course, but it does uh, have a good array of ports that should work with most peripherals that you plug into it. Now, like the Intel version, you can adjust performance levels with a keystroke. So keep an eye on the power button here, which is currently lit up red. If I hit function Q here, it will go into quiet mode, and this will make it so the fans are not all that audible. And of course, it will also dial back the computer's performance to keep it from heating up too much. And this might be something to use if you're just doing some work on the laptop and don't want to be distracted by fan noise. The next mode is the white mode here, and that is automatic mode, and that will dynamically adjust power levels based on what you're doing. And then if you have the laptop plugged in, you can force it into performance mode, which will deliver the full power to the CPU and GPU and give you the best performance that you can get out of the laptop. Uh, this mode will not work on battery, though. You have to use it only when you're plugged in. And if I were to unplug the power right here, uh, you'll see that it goes back into automatic mode. So if you want the best performance, you're going to want to plug in the laptop. Now, fan noise on this one isn't bad for a gaming laptop. Uh, right now, I've got it in performance mode. We're just kind of sitting on the desktop here. I'm not hearing any fan noise at all. Even when I browse the web and do some other stuff on it, it generally doesn't kick the fans on until you really start pushing the system. So when you're playing a game or something, you'll certainly hear those fans kick on. They are audible. It's unavoidable on a gaming laptop, just given the size of the machine and how much heat it is generating. Uh, but generally, the Legion 5s here have been very quiet in comparison to other gaming laptops out there. Uh, but again, your uh, tolerance for fan noise will vary. Uh, the cooling system, of course, needs to be kept clear for best performance. So you're going to want to keep the bottom here clear, along with the sides and back of the laptop to keep that air flowing through. Now, battery life on the AMD version looks to be about an hour less than the Intel one. Uh, we noticed that in our testing, just doing some of the basics on it. So I was getting about five-ish, six-ish hours on this one. Uh, just, again, browsing the web and watching videos and stuff. The Intel version, again, did a little bit better. I was seeing about seven-ish hours on that one. Now, of course, if you decide to start playing games on the laptop, that's going to eat into that battery life much more significantly. So you're looking at maybe an hour or two on both platforms, given the power needs of modern games. So now what we're going to do is take a look at the performance of this laptop and see how it does. We're going to start with a benchmark, and then we'll look at a few games that we ran on it. So let's start off with a benchmark, the 3 d Mark Time Spy test, and there we got a score of 4,102. Now you'll notice that that score is lower than what we got on the Intel version of this laptop, but remember the Intel version had a better GPU, a 1660 Ti versus the 1650 Ti in this one, but the 6-core Intel chip only scored about 20 frames per second on the CPU portion of that test, and the Ryzen 7 here with 8 cores got 31.06. And if you look just below it on the chart here at the Dell XPS 15 that we looked at a few weeks ago, you can see that although the graphics scores are similar because these two computers did have the same GPU, the Intel 8-core chip in that Dell XPS 15 uh, came in around 22 frames per second, where again we got 31 frames per second out of the Ryzen 7. So the Ryzen 7 here with 8 cores is really outperforming an Intel equivalent. And I think if you've got CPU intensive applications, this one will have the edge and might perform a little bit better. But of course, what really matters is how well these things play games. And we did run a bunch on here to get an idea as to how it all performed. This is GTA 5 running at 1080p lowest settings. And as you can see, we're getting about uh, anywhere from 120 to 150 frames per second here. So that was a pretty good uh, experience on GTA 5. We also ran the 2016 version of Doom here at 1080p. And we set this at Ultra. And there we were getting between 80 and 100 frames per second. So that game ran really nicely here and paired up nicely with the 144 hertz display we've got on it. 
Uh, the Witcher 3 we ran at the ultra settings 1080p and there we were getting about 60 to 65 frames per second. This game can be pretty demanding so it was good to see that performance out of it. Uh, we also of course ran Fortnite and there at the uh, looks like the epic settings we were getting between 50 and 75 frames per second so you might want to adjust things down just slightly on Fortnite. Now we also ran Call of Duty Warzone that's running here at 1080p medium settings. Frame rates here were between 70 and 110 frames per second so I think for the bulk of the AAA titles out there, they should run at a pretty decent frame rate on the native 1080p display here. Uh, the price point on the laptop will vary, of course, based on your configuration. Uh, these generally start at around $1,000 with a 1650 GPU and a slightly less powerful Ryzen 5 4600H. Uh, this one here with the 4800H and the 1650 Ti will probably run you around $1,100 or $1,200. And then depending on all the different options you choose, uh, you could see the price get a little bit north of $1,500 to $1,600. So take a look around, do some customization on the website, and I think you'll find something that will work for you. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 98.9%. That means we won't see too much thermal throttling on this one. And you can also see what temperature the CPU and GPU were at under that heavy load. So altogether, I am very pleased with what Lenovo has put together here with the Legion line for this year. Uh, this is now the third Legion computer we've looked at. We looked at the Intel Legion 5, as we mentioned, and also the Legion 7 a few weeks ago. I really like the portability of these. I like the performance I see out of them. And I think if you are looking at this one or the Intel version, I think the AMD one is probably the way to go if battery life is not important to you because you will get a little bit more CPU performance out of this one versus the Intel equivalent. And I think that might be important to some folks depending on the tasks or games that they might be playing on it. And these are really good for more than just gaming too. They're great for uh, video production and video editing. They're great for photo editing as well. There's a lot you can do with a thin and light laptop like this that has all of the horsepower that you might need for some of those demanding creative applications. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.